The architect of Red House was Philip Webb, and he was a lifelong friend of Morris's. They met uh, when they were both studying, training to be architects, and Morris asked Webb to design Red House, and it is an amazingly wonderful, um, an original design, which was a forerunner of very many later buildings in, this in our country. You see the irregular fenestration. Every window is slightly different in shape and position. And then there are the wonderful rhythms of the roofs with their gables, hipped roofs, dormer windows, flattened door roofs over dormers, coming right through to the oriel window here. standing up on its pillar, brick pillar, with this wonderful brick stepping underneath. And that uh, oriel window is an alcove inside the drawing room. You see the Gothic influence, but so restrained because we have rectangular windows and a little Gothic wall arch, a little Gothic shape, pointed wall arch above. And the simile, similar variety that enlivens the whole of what is actually quite an austere building. I mean, it isn't a highly decorated, it's certainly not a grand entrance way. You know, it's not inviting you in, it's really quite a private house. But again, all the window variations and the, and the entrance porch was is extremely modest for a house like this. There are no grand stair steps up, no great um, uh, <coughs> formal entrance. A very enclosed and rather magical house, as sitting as it does within its own garden, walled garden. And here we go into this welcome porch with a motto over the arch and into the house. Okay, and then when we come inside, well, with a wealth of architectural details, where to start, really? You need to look at the great width of this entrance hall, which is truly amazing in terms of a domestic space and was actually used in the manner of a medieval hall with big tables so that you could have a big Christmas party. And everywhere you look in Red House, there are little details that catch your eye and relieve what is otherwise quite a severe, um, built, uh, serious building. And one of those is this little stepping yeah, of the brickwork ceiling, down yeah. beside the You see that it is all on both sides. pricked and pounced yeah, for again. the patterning that was there originally. It's now been whitewashed over, but all those pinholes made for a patterning on the ceiling that meant that this hallway was very vibrantly coloured. The hallway has this great painted settle with the cupboards above and the bench below and decorated by Morris himself in an unfinished sequence from some courtly romance that no one has yet been able to identify. But it's about, ladies and gentlemen, enjoying themselves in the garden. You see all these trees, but, and it's an image of the joyous nature that Morris was trying to recreate, the social aspect of Red House. And in some ways it's an uncomfortably situated house because the main front is to the north, so it is in winter an extremely cold interior, but the Every time you come here, you get a new perspective on it because on a sunny winter morning, like today, with a low sun, the sunlight streams right into the house, right through, right across the hallway to the front door and opens up a whole new angle of seeing of this house, which is what happens each time you come. You see something slightly different and slightly interesting. It's full of these little interest, visual perspectives. And then 
This glass doors screen was not actually here in Morris's time. It was inserted by later owners. But what wonderfully happened was that lots of later visitors scratched their names in the, little, in the glass panes. And we have a record of many later visitors, including some of the people who were here at the beginning, Georgiana Byrne-Jones and May Morris, who of course was a, a, a small child here, um, but also many people from the arts and crafts movement who came to visit the, view the house after Morris's death, and including some names of some Japanese visitors, because at the, around 1900, this was the time when Japan and Britain, in terms of design, were very much uh, interested in each other's culture. Visual, visual. And then, of course, there's this superb oak staircase with its, it's modelled on um, Jacobean examples, and of which there are quite a lot in other national, I mean, originals in other national trust houses, with this wonderful uh, newel post, carved newel post, and just relieved with these circular piercings to um, add another little touch of variety everywhere. Really superb. And up it goes into the staircase tower, which is, of course, the bit on which the house pivots in architectural terms. And then as you come up this great staircase, you look up and you see um, the, the staircase tower, the open rafters and woodwork original uh, decoration by Morris and probably his wife Jane. You see it's become rather discoloured with age but that's what makes us think that it is actually original painting that has never been cleaned and you can still see, you see the pricking the holes where to show the decorator, the people who are doing the decorating, what pattern uh, to follow and the two different patterns that are in this in this space and then another feature up here <coughs> and throughout the house are these internal brick arches which you wouldn't normally see within inside a house they would normally be plastered but here and behind me is uh, brick art internal brick arches and very cleverly arranged because it's only after a little while you, that you see that it isn't actually symmetrically placed. It's slightly, it's as if it was an older house here before. In fact, of course, this was all how it was built. This is Philip Webb's design. And then we come through to the upper gallery through the brick arch, which leads into the studio, which was Morris's original studio because he was intending to be a painter before he was a designer. A completely delightful um, room with windows on all sides to catch all available light and the open, um, open ceiling again with the patterning and it's just of a piece with Red House. Um, Nothing about this house is predictable, but all is harmoniously devised to make uh, every aspect and every space very, very comfortable and pleasing, both for use and for appearance. <laughs>